Back on take three with the Maha Focus, ladies and gentlemen. The Yuti versus the Aghadi. Post Haryana, is the Congress has been asked to take three. Don't get onto the driver's seat. You're going to continue to ride pillion. Uttar Pradesh, Samajwadi Party says all tickets, buy polls, us. And then again in Maharashtra, we'll share, we'll play the field equally. Even now, they're not, you know, come back to, you know, agreeing to all the seats. And there seems to be something of a flux. But that's not just in the Agadi camp, Rahul. It's there in the Mahayuti also. The BJP looks stronger, but they've also not settled on all seats. How do you see this picture? You know, it's interesting. <coughs> the, the phrase, Congress Mukt Bharat, came up uh, through the BJP, actually. Today, I think a large number of India allies are beginning to sort of look at that and say, ha, Congress Mukt Uttar Pradesh bhi ho sakta hai. Look at uh, the way you know, Akhilesh Yadav has basically monopolized the seat mm. sharing pact there, saying that, look, you're going to fight under my symbol. And whichever way you look at it, obviously, Haryana has had an impact psychologically on the alliance partners, in the alliance partners. What they're sort of looking at now is the Congress has a little bit of a liability in direct confrontations with the BJP. I think Zach was also making that point. And they're quite happy if there are fewer direct Congress versus BJP fights uh, for the foreseeable, you know, few months. So uh, whether it's the Mahayuti or uh, Mahagari or it is, you know, uh, Akhilesh or it is in Jharkhand, the JMM, they're saying, let's give Congress less exposure. We might actually get in and have a better chance taking on the BJP. Uh, so I think the Congress has got the short end of the stick. However, even the BJP has had to temper its expectations yeah. on the other side. So I think there's a Lok Sabha election result that has meant that the BJP is also now more amenable uh, to be persuaded into giving up perhaps what could have been a lion's share of the seats. And the Congress after Haryana sort of got knocked down to earth and the others have sort of said, let's also um, reassess where we are. But, but if you look at the mix, the BJP still has the lion's share yeah. in the Yuti, oh, yeah. right? From uh, and uh, they are playing yeah. their, their 155 plus seats already. The Congress is it was aiming at 115. Now it's at 85. It may go max up to 90, not more than that. So in this mix, and UBT and Sharad Pawar's faction are weaker. They're supposed to be perceivedly weaker, but they are getting they've as got many number yeah of seats. as many number of seats. So how is this? How do you read this mix? Or is the Congress now saying? I've got the numbers I wanted. I can do what I want in Parliament and I'll look at the national narrative. Let the regional guys flex their muscle in the regional way because at the end of the day, we need to pull our votes and beat the BJP. So I, I actually think it's a good thing that has happened that the Congress is actually now fighting fewer seats. Mm. And if Haryana is the reason for that, that they've been sort of knocked down a notch or two, I think that's a good thing. And I'll tell you why. I mean, as Rahul mentioned, you know, four out of five uh, seats, direct contest between BJP and, and uh, uh, Congress since 2014, BJP has won four out of five. That's the, the ratio, both yeah. Lok Sabha and Assembly yeah. seats. So the Congress in direct fights has a problem with the BJP, including in the latest case in, uh, in Haryana. So whenever it's a regional party and taking Jammu. on the BJP, and, and in Jammu, of course, uh, whenever it's a regional party taking on the BJP, they tend to do, their strike rate is much better than uh, than that of the Congress. So I think I think it's fundamentally a good thing. I think the BJP should worry about that. The mm. fact that the Congress is actually fighting uh, lesser seats. As far as why, I mean, the BJP fighting 160 seats and the others fighting, I think Shinde Sena is fighting about 80, uh, Ajit Pawar is fighting about 45 or 50, uh, is because, you know, those parties exist because of the BJP. BJP <laughs> those parties yeah. would, would not have been there if there was no BJP. Mm. That's why the BJP is fighting 160 and the others are fighting, you know, uh, much uh, lower numbers. But I think the Shinde Sena, there are two two hmm. parts to it. One is that, look, Mr. Shinde can say strike rate, you know, in the Lok Sabha, he had a higher strike rate than Ajit Pawar's party. Ajit Pawar is the one that's dragging down the UT and so on. And therefore, he's made that games, uh, claim and therefore, you know, he's fighting, I think, almost twice the number of seats that Ajit hmm. Pawar's party is fighting. But at the same time, you know, without the BJP, he can't hope to win any of those seats because ultimately, the BJP vote will transfer to the Shinde Sena. You know, there is a certain natural yeah. sort of alliance there. The reason why Ajit Pawar's party tanked in the Lok Sabha, and many are saying it will tank in the, in the Vidhan Sabha as well, 
is because the BJP vote and the Shinde Sena vote is not transferring to his candidates. It's not. That yeah. is, that because is the Because they are traditional rivals on ground. Exactly. But uh, do you feel there is a change since between 4th of June yeah. till October? Is there a change? Well, look, from a moral point of view, uh, to be honest, uh, Anand, yes, obviously. But I have one sneaking sort of um, anxiety, if, if I may express it. I feel that the BJP needs to look very closely at the seats that have been given by its allies mm. because they have retained 80 to 90 percent of the sitting MLAs. Yeah. Because both Mr. Shinde and Ajit Pawar feel that the loyalist MLAs need to be certainly appeased. Now, there is a lot of anti-incumbency, to be honest, in, in Maharashtra and, and we're seeing the pains and the pressures. Will that sort of, you know, wariness about taking the tough calls and putting the right people because you might find that your party might splinter further, etc., etc., or these people might desert you, will that end up costing the alliance as such? Well, the, here's, uh, uh, the here's, here's the thing. They need to get to 150 out of 288. I'm yeah. not even saying 145. I'm yeah. saying 150 out of yeah. 288 they need to get. You think that they would have even thought of getting up to 120 in July 2024, whereas today there is somewhere the youth thinks well, they well, can get know, up to 200. I, to answer that now, question, what is the I reason think, for the shift? Look, that I, I can think just one state election change the mood altogether? No, I, I don't think so because just 30 seconds since you know you began that question. Look, we've had elections. Uh, you know, 2019 great mandate for the um, you know NDA. They continue that with a good partner in Maharashtra, but the other states didn't quite back them. So mm. you know, Delhi wipe out. Mm. Right, so I think states, we have to be careful about looking at the overhang, either which way, of that Lok Sabha election. Mm. I mean, if the overhang really mattered, the Congress would have swept Haryana and they would have done fantastically well in Jammu. So I'm a little wary about sort of thinking that, st I think state voters you so know, then in exhibit, that case, in that case, a certain schizophrenia. In that case, whether they fight 80 seats each or 90 seats yeah. each, however they do, uh, the, the Aghadi. It doesn't matter. They, it doesn't that, matter. that narrative for I Maharashtra think his should point remain the same. The transference of votes is an important the, one. But, yeah. uh, but the Aghadi has shown that they are able to tr vote transfer much better than the Mahayuti. They, yes. they have, yeah. and which is frankly surprising. You know, yeah. academics should actually do a study on this. The fact that in Mumbai, for example, Muslims voting for Shiv Sena candidates, UBT candidates, yeah. is a study in itself for me. I mean, for this is a party that avowedly, you know, first came into existence against uh, uh, South Indians, and then for the last 30, 40 years has been, you know, avowedly an anti-Muslim party. But then Muslims en masse have been voting for UBT candidates in Mumbai and other places where they've contested. So I think that in itself is a study. But I think the, the, the larger issue here is two things. I think what happened in the Lok Sabha was the combination of the three M's, which sort mm. of did in the, the Mahayuti. One was obviously Maratha. I think they've gone to some extent to address that that uh, concern right. there with the Maratha community. The second was Muslim, of course, which I just outlined, Muslims voting for the Shiv Sena candidates. And the third was Mahar or Dalits. Hmm. Again, I think the BJP and the Mahayuti have gone to some extent to address that concern. Also, this thing about, oh, this whole thing, the reservations will yeah. be snatched, etc., did not work in, in Haryana. So, but, but this 3Ms has been Sharad Pawar's uh, formula for a long time to try and get this. And they also then have tried to get the Adivasis into the mix and see what's happening. And there is a course correction, but more important, We've run out of time, but the, the RSS is back in the mix. Now, that made a difference in Haryana. How much of a difference it's going to make in the Vidharb region, in, in Eastern Maharashtra? There's an interesting Maharashtra. conversation between Yogi yeah. and Bhagwat uh, uh, for Uttar Pradesh. In Mathura. So, there's a yeah, long yeah. conversation yeah. that's happened in Maharashtra. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, in Uttar mm -hmm. Pradesh also that, uh, the, that the meeting happened. So, there are wheels within wheels, ladies and gentlemen. The next episode of Take 3, maybe just after Diwali or around Deepavali, are there fireworks in Maharashtra by then for it to become the first subject? We'll have to wait and watch. A lot can happen in seven days. See you soon.